Shavu Tov, everyone. Welcome to video number 107 in, in our Tell, Us, Tell Stories for Saturday Night group. I adapted and supplemented this story from the website l'chaimweekly.org. I titled it, Position Available. During the month of Elul, the 30 days of introspection and behavior improvement before Rosh Hashanah, a Magid, that is a, a Jewish traveling preacher, came to the town of Beshinkovich in Belarus, in uh, White Russia, where Reb Shmuel, Minkus, where Reb Shmuel Munkus then lived. Uh, Reb Shmuel was a beloved chassid of, of Rabbi Shneur Zalman, the founder of, of the Chabad movement uh, and of Chabad Hasidism. Uh, though known for his sharp wit and Hasidic pranks, Reb Shmuel Munkus was no empty joker. He was a deep personality, one who could abide no falsehood, and whose own ego was completely nullified to perform the will of his creator. The townspeople saw the Magad's letter of introduction, which referred to him as a great tzaddik, a, a perfectly righteous person, who traveled from town to town to arouse and inspire Jews. Being God-fearing people, they immediately invited him to speak and inspire them to serve God better. The Magad began his speech. Over and over again, he accused his audience of committing terrible sins. His entire speech was filled with accusations and descriptions of the terrible punishments awaiting them because of the evil, their evil behavior that aroused God's anger. Only if they would wholeheartedly repent would they possibly have a chance to be spared. The townspeople were utterly broken by the Magatosh words, and they cried bitterly, fearing the awesome punishments. After his speech, the Magad, quite satisfied with himself, retired to the room that the community had arranged for him. A short while later, Reb Shmuel entered the Magad's room. He carried with him a long knife and a sharpening stone. Reb Shmuel closed the door behind him and then bolted it. Without saying a word, Reb Shmuel began to sharpen his knife. A few tense moments passed. When the Magad couldn't handle it anymore, he broke the silence and asked in astonishment, Sir, could you please tell me what you were doing? Without glancing up from the knife he was sharpening, Reb Shmuel answered, as the Honorable Great Magad knows, we are very simple people in this town. Perhaps because it, it is because of our unintentional sins that we have never merited to have, merited to have a great, righteous, God-fearing scholar in our midst. Not knowing what to make of this answer, the Magad replied, Yes, that's true. Nevertheless, what does that have to do with sharpening the knife? Rabbi Shmuel answered simply, We were taught by our parents that, Rosh, that before Rosh Hashanah, one is supposed to pray at the graves of the righteous. Still unsure of what Rabbi Shmuel's point was, the Magad asked, That's correct, but why are you sharpening that knife? Oh, that's very simple, explained Rabbi Shmuel. The nearest gravesite of a righteous person is very far from our town. For some of us, it is extremely troublesome and difficult to make such a long journey. A long journey. With these additional words, the Magad began to feel increasingly uneasy. He started sweating and ventured. But you have still not explained why you are sharpening your knife in this room. Rabbi Shmuel answered, quite simply, I am sharpening my knife here because the people want a very righteous person buried in this town. Now the Magad had not even a shadow of a doubt as to what Reb Shmuel's intentions seemed to be. The Magad stammered, but I am not completely a tzaddik. I have also done some small sins, such as uh, uh, etc., etc. Reb Shmuel dismissed the Magad's revelation, saying, Honored Magad, you are still a very righteous and learned person. As for those simple sins that you mentioned, I, do not even know, I did not even know that they were transgressions. Uh, the Magad trembled and stuttered, but I did some transgressions that were more serious, such as etc., etc., Concerning this revelation as well, Reb Shmuel shrugged, insisting, But you tell us you are still a tzaddik. For us, you are quite good enough. The strange dialogue continued for some time, with the Magad mentioning more and more severe transgressions, and Reb Shmuel telling him, But you are still acceptable for us, since you are far better than we are. Finally, the Magad admitted to some extremely serious transgressions, and that he was not really the great righteous uh, man that his letter of intro introduction and credentials claimed him to be. In essence, he was saying, I am an imposter. Now Reb Shmuel no longer played the simpleton. After putting away the knife, he began chastising the Magad for causing the Jews of the town so much pain and trouble. After making sure the Magad fully understood how one is to talk and treat another Jew, Reb Shmuel unbolted the door and let the Magad go on his way, much the wiser and more sensitive than before. 
Shavuot Tov, everyone. Uh, and hopefully we'll all, all become wiser and more sensitive than before during this holy month of El, El the month of introspection. And we'll all be signed and sealed for a good and sweet year.